been out there sunny, most day 80 degree F. Can you believe it? And usually that's a part of uh, this nation, rainy and cloudy, but we were able to stop over Golden Gate Bridge and see the bridge clearly, no problem. You see all the blessing there, but I have a wonderful uh, week of training and time. So I'm going to share this with you. Uh, this is in Bethel, by the way, Redding, California. <coughs> And God did something in me that's pretty amazing. So I want to try to get to that to you today. Uh, walking together. <clears throat> Last week we talked about this picture, remember? Henry was up there. Who is Isaac? Henry was playing Abraham. Who was playing Isaac? Thomas. And this father and son team walked together in Genesis 22. And <clears throat> in that Bible it says, Genesis 22, Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. Isaac was carrying the wood, the, the, the firewood, and himself carried the fire and the knife. And I talked about that last week. And the two of them went on together. Two of them went on together. <clears throat> this Old Testament picture is part of the very founding scripture for this house. Two of them all come together. And um, you guess what? When I was in Bethel, this picture got talked about at least five times by different speakers. <laughs> five times. Five times. Tell your neighbor five times. I want to escape from this picture. I can. <laughs> Everywhere I sit down, it's talk about, oh, you know, Abraham is going to sacrifice his son. I said, oh, Lord, I got it like four or five times throughout five days. So I know God's speaking to me through this one. And I hope, wish and I pray that I know God to speak to your heart today. Amen. Can you turn, out, turn to your neighbor and say, walking together. Two generations walk on together. Father, son, mother, daughter, mother, son, father, daughter. I don't know. A spiritual son and daughter, you know, father and mother. That picture is big time in print in this church and in my heart. And God used this weekend to speak to, to me again and say, yeah, that's what he's talking about right now. So, um, and um, as the two of them went on together, in the Bible, actually, it took a couple of days because Abraham, actually, they left Isaac's friends down in a, somewhere and they left some of their friends, I mean, the servant there. Only he took his son walking up to where God wanted him to go. So next few weeks, I'm going to share what God is speaking from, for, from the past few years until now about this message. But today, I'm going to show you one thing. And they walk through nights too, yeah? When two of you, husband and wife, parent and children, we walk through nights too. If you feel when we walk together every day going to be sunny, 80 degree Fahrenheit, California day, that's a wrong picture. When we walk together, there will be nights. When we walk with the Lord, there will be nights. And I, in our lives, they walk on together. And, and I have to put this one in, you know. I mean, um, Zach will get a good kick out of it. Father, there's wood and fire for the <laughs> burnt sacrifice. But where is the lamb? I could, I could see Father and Son are, were talking together. I don't think they just walk without talking. A lot of us I see today, when we walk two generations together, there's nothing to talk. Everybody pull out their cell phone. You know, they walk into the restroom and everybody pull out, including parents, pull out the iPad and that's their conversation. What do you want to eat? Oh, you, you, you pick. <laughs> and the dad is on the phone, mom is on the iPad and the son is on something else. And they probably just text, one, text each other, probably make it easier, yeah? So, and and they, they, at that time, there was no cell phone, Amen. Uh, Harry and I, we were in the Mer um, Merwood um, um, Park, the Redwood Garden, basically. And it says a, 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 a sign saying, there's no cell phone surface. Isn't that great? <laughs> <laughs> if you're not walking to this room, every time you want to pull out your, your cell phone, 
Now I just read the article say there's adult ADHD. Basically, social media and phone related. <laughs> because we can't concentrate unless we have a cell phone interruption in between. Are you with, with me on this one? And they walk together, they ask questions, father son question. And you know what happened? And the father, Abraham, answered him. God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. I have to put this one in there. And, and, and two at the end, can you picture these two walk come together? Their end goal is Abraham has to get the knife up, lay down the wood, and Isaac, as a grown man, minimally a young adult, probably minimally a, a freshman in college, he's not a little kid anymore. He can carry the wood. He carried the wood himself all the way, and Isaac is willing to lay down. I've seen so many things happen in God's house between spiritual father and mother and their children. Between, you know, our earthly mother and our children, we have to pull our spirit children onto the altar. Anybody, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah? We have to <laughs> bind them. We have to push them. We have to kick them. We have to pull them. Finally, they finally, you know, reluctantly go onto the altar. But this picture is different. When I talk for a couple of days, I, I guess it's three days, end up to be where God wanted to be. And the son lay down willingly to give up his life. And the father lift up his hand with knife. And you know the end of the story? <laughs> the angel show up and say, hey, Abraham, stop, stop. And I, when I was little, I was very mad at God. I was not happy with Him when I read the story. I say, you are cruel. How come you want to test your, your faithful servant to kill his son? You, you are cruel. You, you, when I was little, I don't know whether you grew up in church. You say, oh, this is it. Another evangelical circle. And we get so used to this. Oh, this is the symbol of Jesus and the Father. Jesus gave up his life for you and me. We went over every little bit of things we know about salvation. We said, this is justified. So that's why Abraham needed to kill his son. But folks, wait, wait, wait. If this would be you and me. So, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, and that, I want to just break down the message for you today, the scripture for here. And father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. Folks, this, the message I'm going to get today is this two sentences, very simple. Father, question mark. Have you ever been to a place where you walk with God and you stop and say, Father, have you been there? Like not in the church environment, not in the Bible, not in your comfort zone. You show up with all the facade on your, in my face and say, it's okay. But when you are alone, you are walking in that dark place and you walk and walk and walk and you don't see the lamb. You don't see anybody else. Less and less people around you. Your friends are left behind. The servant was left behind and you were walking with the father. And after a while, you look around and say, Father... Father, have you been there? And hear what the father said. Yes, my son. That's what I'm going to get to today. Yes, my son. You know, when we walk through the valley of life, the death, the sickness, and everything that really bothers us psychologically, mentally, you know what happened? When we ask, Father, He's going to answer you immediately. Yes, my son. Yes, my son. I heard that voice this week. I was asking, Father. And he was answering me immediately. Yes, my son. And that's the first thing I want you to know. When you walk with God, you can always question Him. Isn't that great? Let me try that again. When you walk with this living God as our Father, with Jesus Christ in our heart, with Holy Spirit, we can always ask, Father, don't count to 
as Pastor Kong Lee. Yes, I would love to sit down with you, have a meal, and talk about life. But, but before you do that, you can do one thing and say, Father, Father, He's going to return, turn His head to you and say, Yes, my daughter. Yes, my son. He's always ready to have a conversation with you. Do you believe that? Do I believe that? And then the final words are here. Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And, and, and if you look at this, this, this scripture, this is say a lot of our, our walk with God. We ask, where is the offering? The Father God answered, I will provide. God will provide. God will provide. And, and, and some of you, like, we go through life, and if you are coming to a situation, we don't know even whether rent is going to come tomorrow. I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> you don't know whether you, your leak on your roof will stop tomorrow. I've been there. <laughs> you don't even know your car can run tomorrow. Been there. <laughs> we used to have a car when I was a graduate student. It's like God tests our, our face that our thermometer always go high beyond red line. And so we have, to, we have to drive and say, in the name of Jesus, our engine is cool. Amen. <laughs> It is cool. It's all good. Hallelujah. I've been there. But, you know, we have a, a very wonderful doctrines. We have wonderful Bible study all in here and say, God will provide. Our doctrine is perfect. But, 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 hey, there's one thing in between. After we got the perfect doctrine, perfect Bible study, perfect intellectual understanding, well, you walk on with your Father, my Heavenly Father, on this journey. And the Bible started the second time in Genesis chapter 22 and two of them went on together. After the question, after the pause, Isaac decided to continue the journey. A lot of us, when we stop, ask questions, get taught, learn the Bible, we actually stop right there. You see that? We step, stop at the point of intellectual understanding of getting answers through here. But we did not go on together. Amen? And, and the same thing, when husband and wife come together, we you know, understand each other for a while. You know, it, it's it really f have a funny joke about marriage. Like everybody outside the marriage want to get in. Everybody in the marriage want to get out. You see that? And, and once you understand each other, we stop walking together. After a while, we know each other so much that we stop walking together. And that, that to me is like, wow. And, and Isaac decided to walk out together in a journey. So this week, I stop, I pause. I'm so glad I have my good friend Henry with me. He's a good sport in the vacation. Well, I hope I'm also a good sport. If you ever get a chance to go on a vacation, don't miss it. It was wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Um, but he snorts a lot, by the way. So <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't bother me, you know. Two of them went on together. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you have partner snore so much, you have to pray, Lord, two of them went to go on together with ear plug. He's so thoughtful. He gave me a, you know, back for ear plug right on my bedside. <laughs> Out of politeness of an Asian, I didn't use it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Two of them, well, how's your relationship with Father God? With the people God put it around you to walk together. With the future generation God and trust in you. With the campuses God leads you to be, people you are going to be with, how are you walking with them today? That's my message. And, and, and there is a scripture that's not in the Bible. Tell your neighbor, it's not in the Bible. But I have to put in there, that's my version of the Bible. I believe in between those Genesis 22, both the son and the father say one thing, even if. God does not provide.
we are going to go. Do you see that message there? Even if God does not heal me, I'm going to walk. Even if God does not answer my prayer right now. So hear me very clearly. This picture has been used all over the world to justify, to give us like, that's why God asked Abraham to kill Isaac because he's going to be the stereotype of Father God in the New Testament to kill his son, only begotten son, so that we can be justified to be saved. Folks, that's all right, that's all good, that's all doctrine, but that's not enough to get us to walk out together. Are you with me on this one? There's one very fundamental principle that is going beyond the self salvation, justification. That's something that God does want us to lose hope. Amen. Hope is something that's hidden behind all this. Is this fallen son had hope in God. Amen. Even if he does not. He does, he does, it's not in the Bible. But you can throw out all the Old Testament to New Testament. Even if Jesus was in the garden and he said, Father God can you remove the cup. But even if I'm going to obey, there's one that's so, so I, want to, I want to watch you more than day. Um, mercy me. Anybody love Mercy Me? Yeah. Yeah. They have a song come out called Even If. I want to hear the testimony from the father and son testimony about why he have this song. Are you, are this song. Are you ready? It's a t today, modern day version of it. It's interesting because when you stand up here, a lot of times people think you're so
heal our soul right now. Heal our soul. It's about hope. It's more than just justification about behavior. Justification about forgiveness of the sin. Those are important foundations, folks. But this is definitely more than that. It's a hope that we have inside. My hope is in you alone. That's why in the New Testament, in Romans, when the writer of Roman, author of Roman, wrote it again, Romans 4, 14, against all what? Hope. It doesn't say against all disaster, against all circumstance, against all situation. The, the, the author wrote it so beautifully. Against all in what? Hope. Abraham believed. Amen? Let's try it again. Against all? Abraham in hope believed. You can see this is about hope. The whole thing is about hope. <laughs> that's, that's a ring about hope. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hebrew 10, 23. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope. <laughs> Without wavering for he who promised is faithful. Amen. And to talk about the God of hope. Say that. God of hope filled with what? All joy and peace as you what? Trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's try just read the bold face one, the big one. God of all trust, overflow, power, Holy Spirit. Let me read one more time. God of hope, all joy, trust, overflow, power, Holy Spirit. So I was walking into the conference. I have to admit, like, some of my hope died. I didn't know that. I just don't not have, I just did not have joy. Sometimes our church already come to this point. It's, it's day and night compared to the past. But I still don't have that. I can't enjoy the process. I'm still worried about future. There's no joy. And, and can I trust the people that I have around me? I lose the trust. I, I'm all being very transparent with you guys. Is that okay? Uh, can I say that? And, and overflow. Not mention overflow. I'm on the floor. You, are you with me on this one? And, and then power. Forget about power. I just feel powerless sometimes. Are you with me on this one? And the Holy Spirit, yes, we see Him more and more on Sunday. But, but I always say, Lord, <laughs> how long? We're going to see that revival. And I always compare myself to other preachers, you know. I love to preach like this and that. But, but, but at this point, I walk into conference. This guy stood up there. His name is Steve uh, Backlunds, and uh, he stopped up, st stood up there, and, and, and his message transformed me. So I don't just quote what you say. Is that okay? That's not from your pastor, but I want to share that with you from my heart about hope. He has been a pastor. He pastored a small church in a very, very rural area of Alaska or somewhere. No, it was, it was Nevada. Nevada, somewhere. Middle of where for 17 years, the church didn't go anywhere. He was bitter. He was losing his joy and all that. I say I can't identify with it. <laughs> okay. And he shared this message. So um, this is what he quoted uh, something changed his life. And I'm going to quote it again. It's from the three battlegrounds. Um, Every area of our life not glistening with hope means we are believing a lie. And that area of our life is a stronghold of the enemy. Let me try it again. Every area of our life not glistening with what? Is that with Bible study? No. Is that with fellowship? Is that with a good, nice Sunday service? No. Hope means that we are believing a lie. And that area of life is a stronghold of the enemy. Wow. Hmm. When did I lose my hope? 
And hope is a confident, joyful expectation good is coming. It's an overall optimistic attitude about the future based on the goodness and promises of God. And you see that confident, joyful expectation good is coming. Amen? I think I lost my hope. I don't know how. But can I be honest with you? I lost my hope. I, it just struck me. I said, oh, I, I, I want to breathe hope. An overall optimistic attitude. I lost that too. I always say, oh, that's pretty good, but Xiao Wei and Zach doesn't, don't not like my, me saying but he, I was like, oh, very good. And then I would say, but. The optimistic attitude about the future, amen, based on the goodness and promises of God. If there will be a breakthrough and change, someone has to have, oh, not faith, not love. Someone must have, I lost it. We believe our hope level determines our influence level. Amen? And you know me. I want to influence the nations. But if I lose hope, <laughs> and, and this church lose hope, <laughs> the level of influence we can have actually is proportional to how much hope we have inside us. Amen? How much influence you want to have you over your children, your husband, your wife, determine it actually is proportional to how much hope you have for them. Amen. If you walk into a place, look at your child, and you lose hope, and you could not have that level of influence over him or her because your influence level is proportional to your hope level. Amen. And I lose it. And we believe there are no hopeless circumstances, only hopeless people. Isn't that great? Let me try it again. There's no hopeless, hopeless circumstances. You come in with a sickness, with a disease, with a situation, with a whatever relationship dilemma you have. You come in. That's a hopeless circumstances. But, you know, we have to deal first is hopeless people. Amen? That was me. And, and a lot of things, when I, I start to learn about our culture or the culture I grow up, church culture or family culture, and we are a culture sometimes love to dash hopes. You see that? <laughs> and we didn't even know the hope was that a long time ago. So for the young generation, if down the road you got, get married and want to you know, have a first girl in your, uh, in your family, name her hope. It will be good. In the morning, hope. Come here. Hope. Let's go have, you know, let's go fish. Daddy, you never ca ca call one. Hope will go, you see. <laughs> and, and say, Daddy, Daddy's going to cook something for you. But Daddy, you always overcook your egg. Hope, that's okay, let's cook. Amen. <laughs> hope. I lost hope. I didn't know that. So as I'm grumpy, I'm grumbling, I'm, you see that? And that's in my heart. Can I be open today? I know I lost hope. I lost hope. <laughs> uh, we believe a hope level. Okay, here we go and continue. And once people get true hope, the circumstance cannot stay the same. <laughs> oh, let me try it again. <laughs> Once have people get true hope, the circumstance cannot stay the same. Yeah, amen. Because hope will draw faith out, amen. Hope will not give up, amen. Hope will keep us going. Hope will put the new glasses on our eyes and see people different around us, amen. We need that hope in us today. And if you and I don't know, except I didn't know, this is message for me. I lost hope without knowing it. I was struggling. I put the different glasses, look at every different things. Have you lost hope without knowing it? A lake of hope means we are believing a... Wow, one step further. If we don't hope in our heart, you know what's coming in? 
not coming, not just, just mundane life. It's not just routine life. It's not just, oh, I'm this character, I'm this. No! If you don't, and I don't have hope in our heart, what's gripping our hearts? Lie. I wake up, I say, my heart filled with lies. I don't know. It is the key for us to know we are being deceived in the area of life. We have hopelessness. We are being deceived. You and I are being deceived if we have hopeless in our life. So Agape House, are you okay to allow your pastor to share a couple of lights, I believe? Is that okay? Yeah. Let me try it again. Is that okay I share a couple of lights that, yeah. uh, uh, that Holy Spirit show me that I believe? Are you ready? And I want you, if you have something you can write, when I, as I am um, sharing my, you with my lie, <laughs> I, 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 I think to me, <clears throat> I believe God is going to open up even more in your life right now. You can start to write down a lie you believe right now. Let's walk this together, yes, as a team. So the first lie I believe here is you are ministering in the pastor's graveyard of New England. Do you know? New England has been called the graveyard of pastors. Anybody know that? Yeah. You don't know that? It's in the history of Christian history in this nation. After the first Great Awakening in 1780, 40, this is the part that Few revival really come. West Coast is always vibrant. Bible Bell, as it is, but East Coast, liberal, money, you see, you name it, okay? Especially here. And this is a lie I already believe in. And I was sitting there. I said, Lord, that's why I don't have hope. You see that? The hope of a revival in this regime is replaced with this lie. I already see my graveyard 20 years from now. I always look at the size of my church and say, 20 years, I probably will be one of that buried in the graveyard of pastors. You see that? The fear creep into my heart. And I was sitting there, tears in my, in my you know, I cried so much, you know, the past week. Uh, Henry didn't, Henry was having, having a good time in camera. I said, don't, don't take my picture. <laughs> I, was, I was in the Lord. I was restoring. I was... And I said, Holy Spirit, I'm not going to pull out my doctrine, not my Bible study. Those are the foundation. I said, Holy Spirit, would you speak a truth and hope in me? Yeah? And I just sit there and listen. That's what I want you to do today as well. Not just go back to your Auto, autopilot mode. This lie, I'm going to use this scripture. Don't go there. Yeah? Listen to the rhema. God. And Holy Spirit spoke to me this way. He said, Hey, you got more dry bones to work with than any other regime. Oh, you guys don't get this. <laughs> it has been a graveyard. If you look at Ezekiel 37, which is a big scripture in my heart, to call out the dry bones to form the army for the Lord. And the Holy Spirit said, Hey, if you are in the graveyard, good news for you, Conway. You got a lot of material to work with. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I was like, Yeah. Suddenly, when I feel this hope, I see everywhere in the East Coast, we, we, we have a chance. Amen. Anywhere there's a graveyard, let's go. <laughs> Anywhere there's a dry bone, we are ready. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'm in the right place. So, so I, I was blaming the area. I was blaming the place God called me to be. I was blaming the circumstance. This is a graveyard. And look at what the whole bring, amen? And God, so good. Father, is so good. So I walk with him. You know, it's not, you know, if you are with me, you know, I'm not boring pastor. Every day, sit there and learn. Yes, I did. But 4 o'clock, uh, Henry and I, we dock out the place. We go hiking. And that's, what's that, Lake Shasta? Yeah, it's a big uh, reservoir. Beautiful mountain. You can, you can share, you can see more from. 
and right by the lake, there's a tree. I preached about tree last week. Look at those dry bones. Those are dry woods, not dry bones. <laughs> I was walking by, I said, I love it. <laughs> That's my New England. As many as they are, we are going to prophesy. <laughs> we are going to say the word, speak into the life, then come back alive. High school, colleges, I don't know, families, we're going to speak life into them. Amen? <laughs> and, and Holy Spirit said, you are the revivalist. Oh, hallelujah. I was born a revivalist. Amen? I was not born to be a Princeton graduate only. I'm not born to be a, a, a good Christian or husband. I'm not, I was born to be a Bell Lab people. I was born to be a revivalist in the kingdom. Amen? <laughs> So now, now my hope is back. I was saying, Lord. So if you walk around, see dry bones, and you are with us, I pray the hope now coming in. Amen? Praise God. The second lie, I believe, you are not influencing nations with this small ch church. God called me to influence the nations. And I, I have the lie in me, like, with this size of a church, you're never going to influence people. Look at those big churches. You know what I mean? You know? <clears throat> Creep into my heart. I'm not significant. What I did is not enough. You see that? Do you hear that lies in your heart too? That's a lie I believe in. You know, and I ask the Holy Spirit to speak to my heart. That's what He said. Are you ready? Call the apple tree, apple tree, even before it starts to bear any fruit. That's from one of that. Well, you will come to the apple tree and say, apple tree, you don't have fruit yet. I'm going to call you orange tree. Are you going to do that? No. Before the apple tree become apple tree, no, he is an apple tree, amen? So we call it is as it is, amen? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, now, what's this one coming in, hope coming in? Now I look at all of you. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to call Agape House an apple tree. Amen? I'm going to call this church apple tree before it becomes fruitful. It's very fruitful already. But I'm going to call it as it is right now. Amen? So I'm going to see, look at you and say, Apple tree! <laughs> apple tree! <laughs> and I look at Jonathan. Apple tree! I look at Kevin. Apple tree! I look at Zachary, apple tree. <laughs> Can you look at your neighbor and say apple tree? <laughs> and, and we always have to wait until the fruit come out. We are like, ah, rah, rah. And I like, this apple tree. But you know, you call apple tree, apple tree. Amen? Oh, the hope just deliver in me. And I preached about this last week. Remember? The organic uh, apple farmer. And, and, and look at him. <laughs> so I say, Lord, I'm going to get my joy back. <laughs> I'm going to get my joy back. I'm going to love the apple tree before you really have the, f whatever that is going to come out. I'm going to laugh and laugh and laugh and have, have that with you and me. Amen. And the number three lies. <laughs> Is you are fighting this alone. No one else understands. Have you heard that too? You are fighting this alone. You know, you're, you're, our coffee house folk don't understand your vision. You know, that's a lie. I, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, you know, you, I'm, I'm open with you. I'm like, oh, no, man. You know, they don't know the vision. God gave it to you. You know, all that in me. Now run me off, you know, what I'm going to talk about. So I pray. I say, Holy Spirit, would you prophesy over my dry bones? Amen. You know what he said? God already gave you a team. They are world changers, history makers, movers and shakers in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Do you know what Holy Spirit is talking about? Us. Let me try it again. Oh, you are, you are not getting it. <laughs> when I say I'm fighting on the Holy Spirit, I say, hey, hold down. You know, I always complain to God. I say, God, can I have a couple of the, the, the really musical type, you know, all the worship team, you guys are musical, but I'm talking about the musical, musical professional, you know, coming in. You know, you know that's a lie, by the way. And, and <clears throat> so, so we are doing the prophetic activation practice. So the, it's, a, it's a young lady came up, very bold, and he said, 
we are 10, 40 years older than she is, but she came up and said, I feel the Lord asking you to write down a word you want to give to somebody. I, don't, I will not tell you that somebody is, but you write down what the Lord is speaking to you. So I wrote it down. I said, you are going to be a heavenly director. I think I'm writing to someone in the audience, right? So we try to find that person. Oh, this is for somebody else. You are the heavenly directors. And you are creative. And you are actually, you are not a, you are, you are not a musician or artist yourself, but you are the heavenly director for a bunch of artists and musicians. You are going to call them, put them together into a team and to be the best army for the kingdom of God in the area of arts. I was so proud of what I wrote there. I said, I'm going to give you to someone. I'm ready. I look around the room like who is going to be that RC or somebody going to direct a young group of artists, musicians to fight for the Lord. I said, well, I love to have that, but somebody I'm going to give that person a word. And to the end, a lady, young lady came out and said, now I'm going to reveal to you who is going to give it to you. <laughs> so, Agape House, get ready. We're going to get a bunch of RC Musical, crazy people coming. Are you ready? <laughs> but before that coming, Holy Spirit said, I already gave you a team. That's, now I sit there, I start to cry. I think each one of you, I start to see you very differently. Amen? <laughs> before that, I'm sorry, folks. I'm like, after that, I sit there, I start to cry. They are what? They are, so let me say, say, you are world history mover and shakers. Why I didn't see that? That's because I lost hope. That's a lie. You should get a kick out of this. <laughs> Another lie, what you have done with youth is not significant, not cherished. This one, you guys know my struggle a lot. And, and I, it was there. It was there big time. You were done with youth. Is, but you know, throughout the conference, every big speaker, man or woman, man of God, a woman of God there, they are leading hundreds of hundred people, thousands of thousand people. Everybody stood up. Harry, is that right? Most of them got a youth pastor background. They stood up there. Oh, uh, 10 years ago, I was a youth pastor in a small church. <laughs> oh, talk. Uh, yeah, my wife and I opened our house. I get a bunch of youth in my house. <laughs> Everybody in the afternoon, there's uh, another youth pastor went up there. And he say, he's 40, and you know, he's, he just dressed like me, black, and you know, walk. <laughs> he gave such a touching thing. He called out people to be a youth pastor. There were hundreds of. Uh, BSSM student went up to altar and gave their life to be a youth pastor for the next generation. Amen. I was there and said, God, you position me to a place. I don't even know you position me in the best position ever. Amen. Because I was very hurt. There are people walking up the church and say, Oh, this is a youth church. They walk out. And that was the Spirit speak to me. Do not despise a small beginning. Next Raya. 14. These stones are growing to borders to impact nations. Amen. Okay, five walkers. Here and out there. I, <laughs> after I see that, instead of see five rock, I see what? So now I see, say, Zach. Or I see Brian. I see Stephen. I see what? I used to see, I used to see this. So, you know, I was, see this. what is the river? Henry, what the river is? Sacramento River, Sacramento river with a sound dial bridge. Uh, you, you can see more. So I was sitting right by the river, again, rock. So I used to see you guys like this, like, oh, you are rock, yeah, you know, I'm, you know. Yeah, but now when I see you, Do you see the border right now, uh, back to me? So we were in the Mer Merwood Garden, and it's big enough. When we climb up there, Harry can comfortably <laughs> stood there, and I was able to also stood up on the border to look under the valley. 
Oh. So guys, when you are down there, as a big boulder, invite me and Henry and us to be in where God leads you to impact the nations. Let us just be there, sit on the rock, the boulder with you to see what God can do, the valley. Amen. Ah, hope comes back. Do you see your child, your children as a boulder or a rock? Or you see them just a rock? The, the people God put in your ministry, in your cell group, in your team, do you see them as a rock or you see them as becoming a boulder, impact the nations? And you know what happened? You know, I, I, I really struggle with this one. And God has to use this pastor coming to the room. He's a Mexican uh, ethnic background. And you can see he came from a broken family, but now he's pastoring like 60 people as a revival group pastor. And he just walked in the room, and we were there with all these young people and people who are starting school from all over the world. We sit down, we are all gray hair. Uh, older people starting school, but this young team coming to minister to us. I want to see when this pastor put up first thing. He just put up a bag of stone and say, like David, <laughs> you know, has five rock in his, you know, you know, shepherd's back. You guys pick up one rock, right? What God put in your heart. I said, Lord, this is too good. <laughs> so, so I pick up a rock. Look at the young team. And uh, um, I, I just ride it. Okay, I'll get to that point in a minute. That's not a lie. As an Asian American, you do not have a chance to lead in this environment. That's a lie I struggle big time too. You know, as an Asian American, can I lead? non-Asian non people. Are you with me on this one? Oh, guys, you don't know how much I struggle with this one. You can tell. You can tell. But it's in here. It's in here. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. I want to break that lie right now. If you have that in your mentality, it is a lie. Amen? Amen. <laughs> you know what the Holy Spirit say? Oh, you will love this. You will love this. Hope said, look at fortune cookies. They are within reach to every day, regardless, to everyone, regardless of background. You are making passion cookies for everyone in the kingdom. You love that? <laughs> so I'm not going to lose my identity as an Asian, but I'm going to make something for everybody. How about that? Let me try it out again. I'm not going to lose my identity as an Asian. I'm going to dye my hair and you know, behave like white or black or Mexican or Spanish. I don't care. I am a Chinese. I am an Asian. However, I'm making passion cookies for everyone in the kingdom. Amen. <laughs> oh, Holy Spirit, you are so, so humorous. <laughs> now, every time I look at a fortune cookie, I'm saying, okay, that's, that's, I'm going to make something. When you open a passion cookie, there will be a short sentence speaking to their life. Amen? Amen. And I saw, oh. And then, uh, you know, this is where the young, the, the revival, very young people, 20-something, they were the student there. I see a lot of testimony. They came up to prophesy over there. So Terry and I were there, and there's a, a girl came in, come up to me and just reach my hand. I was like, oh, Lord, speak to me through this young girl. And she just, mm, 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 mm. the young girl just, mm. but my early 20s. Mm. And she just said one word, passion. <laughs> one word, passion. I'm like, what? How do you know? How do you know I'm a passion coach? How do you know? This is why we care about passion. And he, he, he shake his hands like, go with it. You'll be good. And she, she walk away. When hope coming, when God is in our system, everything is simple, amen? amen. <laughs> Nothing so complicated. Oh, I have to plan this for career. I have to put, it, to put this down for my child. When the hope of God coming, things become simple. Yeah. Oh, I, I see the hope now coming into your heart right now. <laughs> so I just put up this awakening in the East Coast school of law college a new school now folks i'm going to start a school on top of agape house 
God already gave me strategy. Simple enough. All of us can get involved. Amen? Because you will be the mover and shaker in the kingdom. As long as we are willing to say, even if I'm walking. Amen? Even if my hope in, not in, is not in me as a pastor, it's not in the structure, it's not in the system, our hope is in Christ alone. Amen? Amen. That's what we need today. I see the PQ 2.0, all those things which I lose hope for. I'm going to wrap up here. The recognition is the beginning of the journey to let go of lies. <laughs> so the past five days, I was going through a journey, let go of the lies in my life. Amen? I, I'm not anxious to see the change. I'm so at peace right now. If there's no lies, now I know why Isaac and Abraham could walk on together. Those three days, <laughs> if Isaac and Abraham was with no hope, just with doctrine, even faith, it could be a dragging over those three days. There will be complaining. There will be silence. There will be all the lies, I believe, on the right hand side. You see that? But I believe the hope overcame. Against hope, in hope, Abraham believed. Those three days, they're walking hope. Are you and I walking in hope of God? That's a hope not based on you and me. It's something. <laughs> so I look at some of you when you come to worship and I know as a pastor I have to repent so that's, that's the journey I, I've been through but this is the beginning of the journey to let go of lies are you ready to get, let go of lies so his organization just will be starting February 14 a 40 days of fasting of negativity <laughs> Fasting of lies and by feasting on hope. Are you ready to join them? Yeah, yeah. Let me try that. I think we need, including myself, I'll get, get you the QR code. You can scan it. I'll send it on, on, on the, uh, the line group. Uh, if you are not on line group, join on line group. We'll send it out there. And you can sign up. You can scan right now. If you want, you can get your cell phone out. You can send this. Just register. They will send email every day about lies that we believe. And what is the scripture? What is the truth? What is the hope God speak to you in my life? We need 40 day fast on this. Are you ready to join this one? Amen? Amen. Young people, I know you're going to Europe, but I don't know where to get Wi-Fi. Can you scan this? I'll put on the, you know, we have to come up the fast on the line that you and I believe in our, if you have a, if you, have a, you want to QR code scan it, just register today before you forget. Put your email, just three things. You can go over 40 days, February, they, they, they usually have, you know, tens of thousands of people join this fasting. Amen? You know, I love fasting of food, but more importantly, we should fast those lies we believe. Yes? Let go of lies in us today. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Just scan it. You should, you should be able to scan. You should be able to scan the QR code scanner or on the line group. Scan it. You can register right now. I'll give you some time. There's an option. You pay $35 with more, but you can go with this free, by the way. This option is free. There is a one. If you really need, today the message touched you. No, I, this is not me. This is uh, Stephen, uh, Steve uh, Backlands. So you can check his ministry too. Um, hey, let's fast on. Let's fast on lies, negativities. Let's thrive in hope. Amen? Are you ready? I'm going to wrap up here. Zach, how am I doing on time? Thank you. Um, are you ready? Yeah. All right, so some of you need to leave early, but bring this with you. Bring this with you. Okay. Now, um, So I mean, you want to go there, yeah. Walking together today, we share walking together in hope. Tell neighbor, walking together in hope. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is we have the past month where I was the main focus praying for all of you, putting oil on you, and we saw the Holy Spirit moving. But I believe this month we're going to walk into a season where Holy Spirit is going to bypass me and going to touch you and speak to your life. Is that okay? Amen. Let me try that again. Holy Spirit is going to skip me now. He's going to just touch you, speak to you, and among you and me as a team come together because walking together in hope. So I want you to walk right here on this side of this screen here and let the Holy Spirit tell you what lies you and I believe. I don't know. It's the place you feel you are in the wrong place. Or you are with the wrong people. <laughs> or you, you just, just, just condemn yourself for the mistake you made in the past. But I want you to be able to ask the Holy Spirit right now. How the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you with hope. And if you have a pen or you have a cell phone, you can write down those lies. Or just one here. You can write it down right now. Or you can just, and then ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you right now. As we are worshiping, like what the God of hope is going to speak through His Spirit to you today. And I want the young people, young adult youth, could you come up here? Oh, you come up here. All of you come up here. Come on. All of you. All of you come up here. Young adults, everybody, come up. Zach.